Hi everybody, Fintan here from Diamonds and Cloud. I recently did a presentation for small businesses on digital transformation. And while researching it, I thought it was interesting how digital transformation has changed as part of COVID-19. I thought it might be something that is of interest to our customers and our subscribers. So I thought I would run quickly through the presentation today. The presentation is entitled, The Future of Work is Now. And the first question that we asked people was, what are the biggest barriers to innovation and collaboration within your own organizations? Just take a moment to think about that. What are the things, whether it's people or processes or technology that stop your organization from having a more collaborative experience? So the agenda, I'm gonna tell people a little bit about who I am, although you guys probably know if you're subscribers. I'm gonna talk about how digital transformation was before COVID, and then I'm gonna talk about how it was after COVID. I'm gonna define digital transformation because it has many, many different definitions, and I think it's important for us to define what we mean by digital transformation here and now uh, in this conversation. Also, how to be successful with digital transformation. And then the transformation process and the process that we recommend for our customers and that has been recommended by Google. And then I'm briefly gonna talk about a case study. So um, our mission at Dams and Cloud is to help organizations leverage the most value from their investment um, in the cloud by driving digital transformation. And this is quite interesting because um, this little piece here was actually written pr prior to COVID. Uh, and prior to uh, to the lockdown. So this is work is, is uh, reimagined, is the workplace without boundaries, um, without restrictions, and without the traditional work environment. It's no longer a location, work happens anywhere. And this is basically what, what we have been helping customers with for the last 10 years. And I am I'm an expert in change management and business transformation, and that's the area that I help organizations with. I help people break apart their old ways of working and look at new ways of, of uh, building their business processes using cloud technologies like Google's. So BC, before COVID, what did things look like? Well, I think this example of blockbusters is one that we can all relate to. And hopefully um, there isn't too many people out there who are too young to remember who blockbusters are. At their height, Blockbusters in 2004 was a multi-billion dollar business. They had done nearly 6 billion uh, in turnover and they had over 9,000 stores. And by 2005, they'd actually lost 75% of their market share, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, the Netflix CEO at the time, or sorry, the, the uh, Blockbuster CEO at the time, Jim Keyes, said that Netflix wasn't even on their radar when it came to um, competitors. And I think that that's really interesting because two years later, Blockbuster filed for bankruptcy. So in a very short space of time, really half a decade, Blockbuster went from its peak to, to basically filing for bankruptcy. And, and as we know, the, the company is pretty much defunct. And when we look at some of the um, organizations within this space who have just blown apart outdated ways of, of uh, doing things, Airbnb, Uber, Amazon, and Revolut, um, I find Revolut a really, really interesting example because all of these companies have taken a process that is a challenge um, in the traditional way and they have made it much, much simpler. They have taken, a, taken technology and just made the process much faster. So the example that I use of, 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 of Revolut is that I was able to set up a bank account on Revolut um, literally within a few hours. And so it's that kind of technological change um, from an organization like that, that just blows apart the old way of doing things. There are still some banks today where it takes 60 days to set up a bank account and it requires filling out very paper-based forms. With Revolut, you can do everything on your phone. 
and that is true digital transformation. We're going to talk about different forms of digital transformation and how you as a small business can take small steps in terms of your own digital transformation. When we look at some of these organizations, we can see that these are the kind of dinosaurs who have become um, obsolete. Companies like Polaroid and Kodak who didn't see uh, the digital transformation that was happening. And within mobile devices, organizations like Nokia and Blackberry were made obsolete by things like the iPhone and Android. And again, these companies didn't see the writing on the wall. Now, what about after COVID? How has COVID-19 and the pandemic accelerated digital transformation? Well, I love this cartoon here from Tom Fishburne. I think it's absolutely brilliant. This gentleman here is saying, digital transformation is years away. Uh, I don't see our company having to change anytime soon. And the giant COVID-19 ball is coming along. And we heard stories when, when uh, the lockdown hit here in Ireland of large organizations and government um, bodies actually not being able to work because the systems like old VPN and having to log in remotely um, to a particular uh, computer to be able to work, just falling over, they're just crashing because they literally could not handle um, the, the number of people that were working remotely. They were never designed for thousands of people to work remotely. So digital trans transformation has accelerated at an alarming rate for companies. When we look at organizations like Zoom, you know, they made 27 million in the first quarter. They've passed ExxonMobil in, in valuation on their market capitalization, which is astounding. And um, they now have a market capitalization of 140 billion. And I think the question we have to ask is why? Why Zoom? Why not Skype? Why not Google Meet? Why not Microsoft Teams at the time? And I think, again, it's got to do with, you know, luck in terms of uh, having the right tools. But Zoom was very, very focused um, on the tools that, the, that people needed specifically for video call. Now, organizations like Google and Microsoft, we've seen them catch up in terms of the features that they have. And there's now nearly feature parity with a lot of these tools. But at the beginning of the pandemic, there wasn't. Tools that people needed to work effectively remotely over video call were only available in tools like Zoom. And so Zoom was able to capitalize on um, that massive change that happened uh, for everybody. And, and now it's become the de facto uh, thing that is used for video conferencing, um, whether it's you know, uh, in business or calling your, 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 your grandparents. Um, as I said, you, we've seen um, other tools like this catch up. And I think that's great for the consumer because now you can choose between these, these different solutions, but it is interesting uh, looking at this. So how do we as small businesses make sure that we don't become the next blockbuster? Unless, of course, you're in the film industry and that's exactly what you're making. Now, my story with Revolut is quite interesting because we actually use Revolut for our business banking as well. But the way that they, that they uh, got, got us as a customer was that I, got it, I, I used it on my phone for personal use first, which was referred to me by a friend. And the process was so easy that when we needed a business bank account, I thought, well, why not use Revolut? We, I've used it for personal use. It's been excellent. And they're now moving into the business space. And so... Um, when, we, uh, when we decided to do this, we went to set up a bank account. In four hours, we had a business bank account. That to me is absolutely unheard of. Again, taking a process that is painstaking and just using technology to dramatically accelerate it. And now we're actually thinking of, of moving to Revolut for our Irish bank account as well. So digital transformation, again, I said defining it is really important for us. What is digital transformation? Digital transformation is the process of using digital technology to create new or modify existing business processes or cultures and or customer experience. I've spoken about customer experience and I think focusing on the customer and me at the Revolut the, the, as the customer experience is really, really important. Uh, and it's to meet a changing uh, business need or market need. But if we were to sum it up in one single word, it would be speed. It allows you to do things faster. That's what we want to do. We want to accelerate the speed at which um, your customers can, can contact you, can get to your website, can get a proposal or a quote back on the product or service that they want from you. Or internally within your business, accelerate the speed at which you can get work done. 
That is why we as an organization have managed to grow to the size that we have uh, with a relatively small team and many other Google partners and companies that digitally transform are able to do that. You know, you see billion dollar businesses like WhatsApp with five employees. That would be impossible to do, um, you know, several decades ago. So let's take this example here of a hotel booking. Um, if someone was, was uh, filling out a form um, on the website and they had to wait for someone to get back to them versus another hotel where you could go on and get live pricing, which is a, is a better customer experience? Which is more likely to end in more customers? It's obviously going to be this one. Now, if you don't have any online booking form on your website, then obviously an online booking form is a step in the right direction in terms of digital transformation. And it is definitely a road to, to fully, you know, digitally transforming your business. But this is the optimum. This is what you're aiming for. Real-time collaboration, we see this all the time within the Google space. You know, are you still collaborating like this? Are you still sending documents back and forth and back and forth and collaborating like, like people did in the 1990s? Um, if you are, please, please stop. That is the simplest thing to solve within your, your business where you can have live collaboration, whether it's on Google Docs or Microsoft Teams or any number of, of a million other collaborative tools and products out there like Dropbox and the, there's a whole load that will allow you to collaborate in real time and get work done much, much faster because you, you can be guaranteed that, that although you might not be doing this, your competitors are. Next up, we have internal versus external. And this is a really, really important one because um, digital transformation has sort of two areas. As I said, that customer-centric one where you're changing things on your website, on your booking forms, your online purchases, your communications with your customers, your payment gateways. But we also have internal systems like email, document management, HR, payroll. All of these things will allow you to do um, your work faster or, or slower um, if you're using traditional tools. And so all of them will, you know, can be moved towards uh, digital transformation. And, and again, the idea is just to do stuff faster without having to throw people at the process. And you may be shocked to know it is not all about the technology. And um, particularly to hear myself say that uh, as a technology person. Um, it's really, really important to look at other areas. So we say technology is really important. That's obviously what we're talking about when we're talking about digital transformation. But to get through digital transformation, we also need to change the process. What is the process that we're talking about? Whether it's a HR process or a document process or a booking form process. What's the process that we're trying to, to change? And then the people involved in that process. Are they trained? Are they supported? Is it easy for your customer to actually make an online booking? And, and is it obvious what they're supposed to do? And that, when we get the combination of all of these three, the, the, agreed, um, the agreement is that that is when digital transformation, real digital transformation actually happens. So what does a digital transformation roadmap look like? When we break down into these different areas, we, we like to look at these and traffic light them for um, businesses that we're working with so that they can see on a detailed level um, what areas they should look at. So the leadership within your organization. Is the leadership team behind the idea of digital transformation? If they are, then that's great. And this is a, probably one of the most important areas that you need um, to make sure is green and that, that, that is green lighted and, and people are behind it. Because if the executives in the business are not behind digital transformation, then it's not going to happen. What is the culture of your organization? Is it already innovative and collaborative? Or is it something that you need to work on through workshops and training to get people up to a point where digital transformation feels like a natural, normal thing? Do you have the skills? As a small business, you may be missing the skills in terms of the technology and the process training, and you may need to bring in external consultant or get external advice. And then thinking about the business model, does your business model lend itself to digital transformation? Is your team fully distributed or are they all in the same place? All of these things will, will lead into um, your ability to do digital transformation effectively. 
processes are really, really important. You don't just want to change the technology and the people. You want to look at those processes that maybe haven't been changed for a long, long time and move your organization towards breaking apart those, those old processes um, and putting in place new ones that are, is going to help transform your, your business. And then costs. It's really important to look at the costs and to put money aside and say, okay, this is going to be a cost saving in the long term, but at the moment we need to invest in digital transformation and we need to be prepared to put that, um, that, that money into training and, and, and improving tools. What sort of core tools do you have in your business? Um, what is the current technology stack and does it require uh, changing and upgrading in order for your business um, to uh, engage and enable digital transformation? And admin and IT and security, we often have security as the crutch or, or as the um, excuse that people use to not be able to digitally transform. But we've seen in the age of COVID that when people are forced into it, companies that said they could never digitally transform were magically able to do so overnight because without it they would actually be unable to work. And then finally we have the infrastructure. It's really important to look at the infrastructure within your business and that's the support network around the technology. Do you have the broadband um, to support your organization to actually digitally transform? That can be maybe mean improving the broadband that you have or putting in place backup uh, solutions in terms of broadband. So all of these things uh, feed into your effectiveness in terms of digital transformation. So what does the process look like um, in terms of digital transformation? What's the process that we use with our customers and that Google recommends? So the digital transformation pro process, IDPI, inspire, discover, prototype, and iterate. They are the four step processes for, for digital transformation in most organizations. And I'm gonna go through those in detail now. So the first one is inspire. This is about in, uh, looking at the uh, other organizations within your industry and getting inspired by what they have done. Have a look at what other companies have done and, and be inspired by them because um, you know, in, in, instead of looking at your competition and, and saying, oh my God, it's terrible that they've, you know, that they've got a better website than us, look at what they've done and say, could we do that? Could we maybe even iterate upon what they have done um, and, and, and make an even better process for our customers? Then we have discover, and this is a process that, that a lot of people within organizations really, really enjoy. It's about looking at your own processes and, and mapping those out uh, for your business that you may not have looked at for years, if ever. And at this point, it's really, really important to not focus on the solution at this stage. The, the point of, of this um, discovery process is to map out what your business processes look like right now as they stand. And then we look at the business processes and we prioritize them. What are the ones that we should work on now? We look at the ability to execute them. Is it going to be easy to digitally transform this process or is it gonna be hard? And what impact would that have? Would it have a really, really high impact? Would it transform your business? Or would it have a very low impact? And maybe it's something that we should, we should not waste our time on. And we're trying to find those quick wins up on the top that we can transform the business quickly that are relatively easy to implement like a booking form on your website and are going to have a really high impact because your customers uh, are gonna be able to get back to you quicker. And then we have the prototyping stage. This is where you look at the tools that are available in the marketplace, whether that's Google or Microsoft or whatever it is that you want to use. It's very uh, valuable to have a technical person at this point or this stage in your process and you want to see, is there a way that we can use these tools to completely change um, how, how we work or, or, or um, improve the process, the particular process that we're looking at. And then iterate, always be improving. This is not a process that you do once and you stop. We are always digitally transforming within our own organization. And a really, really good example of that um, is a product called PandaDocs that we um, implemented recently. And it replaced our old uh, quoting and um, contract management system. And now since we've been using PandaDocs, it is so much easier for us to prepare quotes uh, and, and uh, proposals and contracts for customers. What used to take 
uh, several hours now can be literally done in minutes and it pulls the information from our customer relationship management database our CRM system so um, you know it's not a process that you do once and you stop you're always innovating and always iterating um, and it's something that we run within our own businesses and look at processes all the time and say how can we do this better how can we do this faster and you you want to be an organization where people feel um, staff feel that they can say to you um, yes here is a really good idea I believe this process could be improved or could be changed you want to be an organization that is innovative and that um, invites that type of challenge you know challenging the processes that exist within the organization how can they be improved um, this is an example of a digital transformation lab that we ran and you can see you know it's all about post-it notes it's interactive this this you may recognize this from the previous slide with the quick wins this is what it looks like in in sort of real life um, and we're trying to um to get to a point here where we can find a process uh, that we can transform and that's a quick win and then this is a transformation lab that the guys have actually gone through a process uh, and they've mapped it out and they've they've digitally transformed it um, I thought this was really interesting, this example of Schnucks, um, which is a, a retail store in, in, in the US. And when COVID hit, they used Google Meet and video conferencing to be able to connect um, with, with uh, other people who were, who were in the retail stores. Managers did because they obviously couldn't physically go there. And also when the truck drivers would arrive for deliveries, they would actually um, engage with them over a video call on their phone or tablet. And that would mean... Um, that they uh, wouldn't have to get out of the trucks and wouldn't obviously risk, uh, as I said, uh, contamination or whatever. Um, and then the other example here is uh, Cambridge Health Alliance. Cambridge Health Alliance, again, used video conferencing to engage with its uh, psychiatric patients and they managed to keep 85% um, of their appointments when COVID-19 hit and they had to go into a form of lockdown. So again, using Google Meet, uh, for that. So the question is for yourselves to leave you with that the workplace is changing right now and how does your organization stay up to date uh, with these changes. So look at your digital transformation map, be inspired, discover and map out your processes, brainstorm and research um, uh, ways of, of changing those processes and remember that digital transformation never stops. Thanks very much, guys. I hope you enjoyed this week's update. If you are not, please do subscribe to our channel and hit that notification button so that you will get notified. We also have a newsletter now uh, on our website so you can sign up to our newsletter and have uh, four or five of our latest blog posts and videos dropped into your inbox every single month. I will chat to you guys next week.